Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to share with you guys a fun origami project that's uh, perfect for summertime. Um, I thought we could take uh, some colors again. I've been, I started a series a few days ago with a theme of colors that I think look good together that kind of drop certain kinds of feelings or times of the year or something like that. And uh, the color scheme I was working with today has a really bright, kind of playful, fun, sort of almost um, I don't know, energetic kind of feel to it. So I thought these colors all kind of look really nice together and really pop. So if you're looking for something that's really bright, these colors might work really good together. And um, as I did with the previous project too, I'll have a downloadable that you can use and print at home if you don't have access to the taunt paper that I used for these. I got all these from the Taunt's uh, 100 Shades pack. So um, if you buy the individual blues and, and stuff, I don't know if you'll get everything, especially pink and stuff aren't in those so uh, it's a great way to get a hold of a bunch of different shades of colors and um, what I thought we could do is take all of these make little pinwheels like I've started to do here and then we're going to connect it to a chopstick and then you just also need a twisty and I'm using this kind of eyelet punch, but you can also just use a regular hole punch. Um, it's just kind of up to you of how to deal with that. If you use a regular um, hole punch, you'll need to kind of put a little bit of tape around the area here so that uh, everything doesn't kind of get weird on you. But um, uh, this way kind of works really nicely because you get everything really secured. Now, um, let me show you just how to make a pinwheel really quick here, and then I'll show you how to do the hole punching part. The problem with it is that it's so big, um, the paper is so wide, and the space for the hole punch is really narrow here. So um, I'll just show you how to kind of roll the paper up and then poof things out when you're done. Um, you don't want to use paper that shows creases or folds a lot. Uh, the nice thing with the top paper is it, it does kind of recreate its shape a little. You can see a little bit of dents here, but since we're going to be making a pinwheel too, uh, you know, it's going to get worn out as we go through things. So let me just show you guys really quick here again how to make a pinwheel. You want to start off here with your paper. If there's a color side, you want the color side facing down. And I'm just going to go ahead and fold my paper into a big triangle. And then do the same thing going the other way too. Then with the color side facing up, I'm going to fold each of these four points to the center. And this is uh, called a blint space or a zabuton base in Japanese. Because a zabuton is a cushion you sit on on the floor that kind of looks like this nice little square. So I'll get all four of these sides folded in here. Flip it over and do the same thing going on this side now. Take care when you fold here because you don't want to accidentally snag on the pocket that you see right here. It's easy when you're kind of doing the creasing here that you can accidentally snag on that. This is just one of many techniques to be able to make this pinwheel. There's a lot of different ways, lots of different steps. It's kind of more a point of what you feel more comfortable with. This way really gets the pre-creases so that you don't have to do much when you collapse it down. So uh, unfold everything here. And let's look at the white side if you have a, a non-color side of the paper here. If you're dealing like I am, you'll see the uh, square in the middle should all be a valley crease, not a mountain crease. And we're just going to go ahead and fold in here. This part's already fine. The top and the bottom will be reversed as you make this crease. But I'm just going to fold these two parts into the center to get something like this. And then we're just going to open each of these sides and allow this to come out and down so that we can create one of the sides of our pinwheel. And I'm going to just go around and do this for all the sides until I can get my completed pinwheel. Now the secret to getting this all to work well with the, the point of uh, putting the hole through, um, like I said, if I, I'm using an eyelet punch, uh, but the distance here is really short. So what I do is, and I want to try to get the nice rounded part to be on top as opposed to the back. You, know, you want it to be like this so that the back side's kind of ugly looking. <laughs> um, what I did is I just folded this part. There's already a crease here, so I'm just tucking this behind. And then I just kind of loosely rolled this. And you do need to kind of roll it uh, uh, like three times almost because I want to be able to have enough space here so that I can still get to here and not worry about running into anything. 
And you can even kind of mark it a little, give it a little pinch. And then I went ahead and put this little guy here. And it can be a little tricky because we're working with um, trying to get this guy in here. There we go. Hopefully, fingers crossed we've got it in there right. <laughs> it can be a little tricky sometimes. And then you just squeeze really hard. Once you've gotten that through, then we just kind of unroll things, try to re-roll it the opposite way to get the creases kind of out, and then kind of re-crease the edge and then poof out the sides a little to try to help it get some life back into it a little bit here. And that should give you this nice little completed piece then for all these guys. And uh, what I thought would be neat is to go ahead and take a one part of a chopstick here. And I'm just going to take my twisty and secure it up here at the top. And I really want to get this as tight as I can. And get this to twist around. And I'm just going to keep twisting and create almost kind of like a little nail that sticks out here. And I need it to be fairly long because I'm going to put all four all in the same piece so that I can get this really cool combination of colors. So I'm going to try and keep my fingers crossed. Even if it's not enough here, we could test it out. I'm just going to make this into a point. And then we can go ahead and put these colors together. And I'm just going to go ahead here. Let's see. That looks kind of cool. I'm put yellow. You can kind of play around with this, see which way looks best to you, of course. But I just want to slide these in here. Then I'll just go ahead and put this one through. And the orangish red color here. pretty good. Maybe just a little longer. And then once you're at a point where you think that the distance is good, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of tweak these around to create sort of like a little petal kind of look to it. Get this guy to twist around if I can so that we get this sort of like propeller sort of piece finished off at the front there like this. I don't know if you guys can see that though. <laughs> and that gives you kind of your completed little pretty, uh, you know, colorful um, pinwheel. That's the word. <laughs> I'm like at a brain freeze. Couldn't remember what I was trying to say. Let's see if it actually, uh, you know, turns around here. So you can see that kind of looks pretty cool. And it makes just a pretty decoration, too, if you can get everything kind of at the right angle there. Pretty thing to have for a summer party, picnics, fun project to do with kids, those kinds of things. Um, and a great way to kind of utilize some really pretty colors that work really nicely together, too. So I'll have the link for the downloadables if you want these solid colors that work really nice together. You can download those and print them at home. And I'll have some more fun projects to share with you guys in the days to come. Thanks again always so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!